Okay, we started talking today about, or yesterday, about surface area of prisms. A surface area of a prism is the total area of the outside of the box here. So, to find the total surface area, this is what we do. First, I'm going to give these some lengths. So, let's say this is 8 feet long, 3 feet long, and three feet long. What I'm saying here is that this distance here is eight, this distance here is three, and this distance here is three. Alright. What I'm going to do now is set this up. This is the way I always want you to do this. I want you to write these words. Top, bottom, front, back, side, and side. All right, the front is the part we can see facing us. The front is made up of a rectangle that is eight feet long. So if I were to draw just the front, it would look like this. It would be 8 feet long and 3 feet tall. And the area formula for a rectangle is length times width. So length times width. So if this is 8 and this is 3 for the front, it would be 8 times 3, which is 24. The back would match it. The back is that side you can't see behind it. So here is the front and behind it is the back. Now this is what I'm going to call the side. doesn't really matter if it's the right or left side because they're both going to match each other. The other side is over here and you wouldn't be able to see it. The side is 3 by 3 three foot, three foot. The other side would also be three by three. Three times three is nine. Now the top is going to be up here and the bottom down at the bottom. The top is eight foot long and it is three feet wide. So the top and bottom is also eight by three. all of these are feet squared. Okay, once you get all the measurements of all the sides, you simply add them up. So that would be 24, four times. So bring up my trusty calculator and 24 times 4 equals 96. And I know 99 is 18, so plus 18 and that equals 114. So 114 feet squared. Now that's surface area of a prism. I'm going to pause just a minute and let you get this down in your notes. Now, okay, what we have here is called a cylinder. A cylinder is a three-dimensional object with two circles at each end joined together by a lateral area when unfolded is a rectangle. I'll be demonstrating with a sheet of paper as the video plays. Okay, this is what it would look like as the three-dimensional figure. Now I'm going to show you what it would look like as the net. As a net, it looks like a rectangle with two circles. If you can imagine this rectangle being curled and taped together, and then these circles being lowered over the ends. Now, I'm going to put some measurements on this. We're going to call this radius 3 feet. So if they give you the diameter, you would just cut it in half. But in this case, I'm going ahead and giving you the radius. And then we need to know the height of this cylinder. So the height is usually displayed on the outside. I'm going to go ahead and tell you the height is 12 feet. 
Now we're asking how much flat space is on the outside of this figure. So for this we're going to need two formulas, actually three. We're going to need the area formula for a circle, obviously. We're going to need the area formula for a rectangle. The one that's not so obvious is that we're going to also need the circumference formula for a circle. Okay. Once you have these three formulas copied down, you start arranging your work. The first thing we're going to do is recreate what we see in three dimensions over here in two dimensions. So this is going to be three feet. Likewise, this is going to be three feet. I get this from this circle here. The height is 12. This part here is the height. Now I want you to notice we have no idea at present how long this part is right here. This green length is our mystery length. I'll explain how we get that in a moment. Let's go ahead and take good care of the circles. Area formula for a circle is area equals pi r squared. So I'm going to go ahead and write pi as 3.14. And the radius is 3 squared. Once I know the area of one circle, I will know the area of both of them because they are congruent. Alright, the area of the circle is 28.26 feet. 28.26 feet squared. Likewise, the area of the circle is 28.26 feet squared. Okay, we're halfway there. Now, what we need to do is find the area of the rectangle. Area of the rectangle is length times width. The problem is we know the width or the length, either one you want to call it. We know one of the numbers, but we don't know the other one. Now, this is the tricky part. This is where you have to pay attention. This part right here, this length I'm shading in red now, is the same as the distance around this circle. That's the reason we wrote the circumference formula down. When we find the circumference of this circle, we also have the length of the rectangle. So, I'm going to go up here and I'm going to write circumference equals 2 times 3.14 times the circle's radius, which is 3. So 2 times 3.14 times 3 gives me a circumference of 18.84 feet. Which means this distance here is 18.84 feet. Now that I know this, I can plug it in right here and I have length times width. Go ahead and work that out. So 18.84 times 12 and that gives me 226.08 feet. Feet squared of course. Alright, so one circle is 28, the other circle was 28.26 so all you've got to do is add these three things now so 28.26 plus 28.26 plus 226.08 and that gives me 282.6 feet squared
And this is how you find the surface area of a cylinder. Let's recap. First thing when you get a cylinder, I want you to draw it like this. That helps you understand what's going on. Once you draw it like this, find the radius of the circle. In this case, the radius was 3. Find the area of this circle, then find the area of this circle. Once you know one, you know both, so that's easy. Then you have to find the circumference of the circle to find this distance right here. Once you do that and find the circumference of the circle, write in both distances here and length times width gives you the area of the rectangle. The area of this rectangle, for instance, was 226.08 feet squared. Once you know the area of the rectangle, just simply add what I'm highlighting together. You add the area of the circle, the area of the rectangle, and then the area of the last circle. And then you have the total surface area. And that's it.